Behold the day of clouds and thick darkness. I'm going to start this off by speaking against something called the Assumption of Moses, which wasn't actually an assumption of Moses. Now, according to Wikipedia, a questionable source for information, the Assumption of Moses, otherwise called the Testament of Moses, is a Jewish apocryphal pseudepigraphical work. It is known from a single 6th century incomplete manuscript in Latin that was discovered by Antonio Seriani. But it's Greek to me, if you know what I mean. Some people say that this writing backs up their claim that Michael took the body of Moses into heaven after disputing with Satan over it. But nowhere in this writing does it mention Michael taking the body of Moses into heaven. Again, according to Wikipedia, pseudepigraphical works, or pseudepigrapha, are falsely attributed works, texts whose claimed authorship is unfounded, a work simply whose real author attributed it to a figure of the past. Like Moses, who was lied about. And here's more information from Wikipedia on this so-called Assumption of Moses. Some ancient writers, including Glacius and Origen, cite the Assumption of Moses with reference to the dispute over the body of Moses referred to in the Epistle of Jude 1 9 between the Archangel Michael and Satan. This dispute does not appear in Seriani's manuscript. This could lend support to the identification of the manuscript with the Testament of Moses, but could also be explained by the text's incompleteness. It is believed that about a third of the text is missing. An alternative explanation that Jude is compounding material from these three sources. One, general Jewish traditions about Michael as grave digger for the just as Apocalypse of Moses. Two, contrast with the accusation by Michael of Azazel in the book of Enoch. Three, contrast with the angel of the Lord not rebuking Satan over the body of Jeshua, that's the way it's spelled in here, J-E-S-H-U-A, in Zechariah chapter 3. And that's what it says in Wikipedia. And I would just like to mention that the Apocalypse of Moses is once again said by Wikipedia to be a Jewish pseudepigraphical group of writings. If anyone wants to try to explain by combining those three books how Michael exhumed the corpse of Moses and took it to heaven, they'll be a proven liar because Michael is no grave digging angel for some Michael Jackson thriller kind of resurrection. Consider if you will that it was in or around the sixth century like that sixth century manuscript found by Antonio that Islam's Muhammad supposedly ascended from that rock that they keep under a dome in old Jerusalem into heaven. But unlike Moses, the servant of God, Muhammad was a child raper who had sex with a nine-year-old little girl. I tell you the truth, if I caught someone molesting a nine-year-old like Muhammad did, I would kill him without mercy who showed no mercy. James 2, verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that shewed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Consider the words of Christ in regard to an old covenant dead body of law commandment 
that has to do with killing. Matthew 5, verses 21 and 22. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his bro brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. I'm not angry at child molesters without a cause. And no one goes so far as to get their rocks off in a little child without being a complete reprobate bastard to God. Child molesters like Islam's Muhammad, Talmudic rabbis, and Catholic priests who sodomize little boys feed off of the fear and pain they cause little children. It's satanic power that they gain from that. And that's why God raised me up to destroy these kind of reprobate bastards and their perverted religions. Now Satan has relied on controlling people through fear. And that's why Judeo half-assed Christians care to keep their whore churches strong. They're afraid that if they don't support their particular cause, Muslim headhunters will cut all their heads off. And the nation of Islam knows how perverted mainstream Christianity is so they choose to justify their perverted apostle Muhammad to support their particular cause. And then there's the sides between the synagogue of Satan's Judaism and the slaves of Islam. It's kind of like the pass the buck insurance company doctor patient triangle of scapegoat excuses that many of you are familiar with. With Judaism, Judeo half assed Christianity, and Islam. And doctors in the U.S. don't tell their people that come in there, their patients, that the FDA is poisoning them because they follow certain false government guidelines so they can get paid a whore's wages to conform to perverted government. I don't choose sides between Jezebel's old Jerusalem, whose house is spiritually desolate, and Ahab's nation of Islam. I'm an equal opportunity destroyer who is also trashing Judeo-Christian double-minded religion like the Catholic whore, for example. Consider Galatians 4, 21 to 25. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. So keeping these things in mind, I'm going to read Jude, which backs up Enoch who mentions the removal of all the wicked and the godless in the book of Enoch. Jude verses 10 to 15. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, 
without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The words of the blessings of Enoch. This is chapter 1 wherewith he blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation which is now when all the wicked and godless are to be removed and he took up his parable and said Enoch a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens which the angels showed me and from them I heard everything and from them I understood as I saw but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them, the Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal God will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens, and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. But with the righteous he will make peace, and will protect the elect, and mercy shall be upon them. And they shall all belong to God, and they shall be prospered, and they shall all be blessed, and he will help them all, and light shall appear unto them, and he will make peace with them, and behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all their works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him the ten commandments which I proved in my last video are a dead body of law helps protect wicked and godless child molesting bastards through Exodus 20:13. I'll leave a link for that video under this video and I ask if you have not watched that to please watch it Daniel 12 verses 1 to 3 and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever and I do say that anyone who tries to stop me from destroying these perverts through a certain law of preference will be made a public example and they will burn for it whether they believe or not I just want people to see my face and how sincere I am because no one stops Michael from destroying these child molesting perverts and their religions. Thank you.